Hello everyone. Here we talk about compound interest. When interest is paid periodically and added in principal periodically, principal is updated periodically. This kind of interest is called the compound interest. Every period, the interest will be calculated based on updated previous principal. Here we have some terminologies. Interest compounding period is the time period that interest is calculated and added into the principal. For example, if interest being added into principal every month, or every week, or every half year, and so on. So this month, week, or half year is called. Compounding period. Periodic interest rate is the percentage of the principal can grow in one compounding period. We use lowercase i to represent periodic interest rate. If we use lowercase j to represent nominal annual interest rate, and m is the number of compounding periods per year. Then we have the relationship i come from j divide by m. If p represents the principal, i is the periodic interest rate, and n is the number of compounding periods from beginning to the end. Then the mature value of the principal after n compounding periods. Come from p multiply one plus i with exponent n, or we use the future value and the present value to replace s and p. This is the foundation of compound interest. The only formula here. It can be rearranged as different format, so we can find the principal directly. Here we can see the convenience by using exponent. When we look for present value or principal, simply the exponent is negative. That's the only difference. Negative n. Example one. One thousand dollar in a saving account can get interest five percent per annum, compounded. Annually for ten years, how much money will be in the account at the end of ten years? For part B, this compounding period change to semi-annually. The other information same. Part C, this compounding period change to quarter, and part D to monthly. So we can look at. Different from this example, directly use the formula. Put information in properly. One thousand dollar principal, five percent interest rate compounded annually. So here, zero point zero five directly because it is an annual interest rate and compounding the annually. Exponent ten represents ten years. Year is compounding period. Here we have ten compounding period. Give us the answer: sixteen hundred twenty-eight dollar eighty-nine cents. Part B. See the difference. In the formula, I represents periodical interest rate. It transfer from annual interest rate divided by how many compounding periods a year. When interest is compounded semi-annually, that means you have two compounding periods a year. So five percent divided by two—that's what we need. And correspondingly, the total compounding period changed as well. Compounding twice a year—that means ten years. We will have twenty half years. So here, give us answer. Future value sixteen hundred thirty-eight dollar sixty-two cents. 
so we can clearly get this kind of sense when interest being compounding more frequently, then the money grow faster. With the same time period, same interest rate, the future value little bit bigger. Part C, interest being compounded quarterly. So here, periodic interest rate divided by four, and total number of compounding period forty. Each year we have four quarter, ten year we have forty quarters. Give us the answer. Future value sixteen hundred forty three dollars sixty two cents. Part D. Interest compounded monthly. So the periodic interest rate come from annual interest rate divided by twelve, twelve times a year. So the total compounding period for ten years would be hundred twenty. We have the future value sixteen hundred forty seven dollar one cent. Example two. What is the future value after seventy eight months of twenty five hundred dollar invested at five point two five percent per annum compounded semi annually? Here are the basic information come from the question. We have present value twenty five hundred dollar. We have periodic interest rate five point two five percent divided by two. Compounded semi-annually, and then we switch our time period to compounding period. Question: Give us seventy-eight months. We need to switch to half year. Each month we have six. Each half year there are six months in each half year. So seventy-eight months divide by six. Give us how many half years? That's the number we need in the formula. Thirteen half years. We put the information in. We get the answer for the future value: thirty-five hundred one dollar and thirty-two cents. Example three: What will be the value of a deposit of? Seventeen hundred fifty dollar made into a registered retirement savings plan for March first, nineteen ninety five to December first, twenty fifteen, at a four point four percent per annum compounded quarterly. So we recognize the information: present value seventeen hundred fifty dollar. Periodic interest rate would be four point four percent divided by four, compounded quarterly. That's the reason. And then we need to find how many quarters from beginning to the end, March first, nineteen ninety five, until December first, two thousand fifteen. If we think from March first to March first, that will be exactly twenty years. Each year we have four quarters. Twenty years give us eighty quarters, and from March to December, nine months would be three quarters. Each quarter we have three months, so in that case, total we have eighty-three quarters. Put this information into the formula. We can come out the answer: forty-three hundred thirty-eight dollar ninety-four cents. This is the. Future value for this RRSP account after twenty years and nine months. Example four: A deposit of two thousand dollar earns interest at six percent per annum, compounded monthly for four years. At that time, the interest rate changes to seven percent per annum, compounded quarterly. What is the value of the deposit three years after the change in the rate of interest? So this question gets a little bit complicated.、Uh, interest rate change once, but we can see for compound interest the situation. It is very convenient to handle. Here's our investment structure: 
$2,000 from beginning. The first part, four years, interest rate 6% compounded monthly. And then the following three years, 7% compounded quarterly. So we calculate the first part first from principal to the first future value, S1. Put information in the formula properly. 6% compounded monthly, periodic interest rate 6% divided by 12. For 4 years, total compounding period by month would be 48. So we have the future value. Since this is not final answer, we keep more decimal places. And then we continue based on the new updated principle. And for the following three years, 7% compounded quarterly. So 0 0.07 divided by 4 gives us periodic interest rate. And the total compounding period would be 12, 3 times 4. Each year, there are 4 quarters. Finish the calculation gives us the future value, $3,129.06. And you can see the convenient part, we actually can put them together. The two steps, we can finish the calculation one time. Multiply, continue multiply. Since the first part, that's the future value going to be used as principal for second part. Example 5. J opened a registered retirement saving plan with his credit union on February 1st, 2007, with a deposit of $2,000. He added $1,900 on February 1st, 2008, and another $1,700 on February 1st, 2011. How much money will be in his account on August 1st, 2017? If the plan earns a fixed rate of interest, 7% compounded semi-annually. So we can follow the action directly to have the future value figured out. Here's the structure. We label the action in the timeline so we can clearly understand the whole activity. Beginning star P1, $2,000, and then we put more money, $1,900, and then we put more money, $1,700. Eventually, we want to figure out the future value at the end. For first part from P1, we calculate the future value, one year time period, Interest compounded semi-annually, so 7% divided by 2 gives us periodic interest rate for one year, which is 2 compounding period. Finish this calculation, $2,142.45. After added $1,900, P2 come from S1 plus $1,900 give us the new principal. And we use the new principle to do the second part, future value, same structure, from February 1st, 2008 to February 1st, 2011, exactly three years, periodic interest rate the same, 7% divided by 2, and three years, we have six compounding periods, and give us answer. And with this answer, we add Another $1,700 give us the new principle. We keep more decimal number here since it is not a final answer yet. With the new principle, we calculate the last part from February 1st, 2011 until August 1st, 2017. So this part, we have 13 half years, February to August, that is a half year. 2011 to 2017, that is six years. So six years, you have 12 half year plus one half year, we have 13 half years. 
Finish this calculation. Give us the final answer: ten thousand four hundred thirty dollars thirty-four cents. And this question could be done in a different way. For each part, two thousand dollar, nineteen hundred dollar, and seventeen hundred dollar, we can directly calculate the future value until end, and then put them together. For two thousand dollars, days twenty one half years from beginning to the end. For nineteen hundred dollars, days nineteen half years from February first two thousand eight to August first two thousand seventeen, and for seventeen hundred dollars until the end, that will be thirteen half years. After that, we simply. Put them together since all the numbers at the same time. August fourth, two thousand seventeen. We get the exactly the same answer. This structure would be a little bit easier than the earlier solution. Example six: A demand loan of ten thousand dollar is repaid by payments of five thousand dollar in one year. Six thousand dollars in four years, and a final payment in six years. Interest on the loan is ten percent per annum, compounded quarterly during the first year. Then change to eight percent, compounded semi-annually for the next three years, and then change to seven point five percent, compounded annually for the remaining years. Determine the final payment. Let's look at the structure. The red is the loan where started ten thousand dollar, and then pay back. We label the different color means the cash flow different direction. One year after payback five thousand dollar, four year after payback four thousand dollar, and then eventually. Six years from now, how much you need to pay? Finish this debt. Declining balance method. We have to follow the action. Before the five thousand dollar payment, we calculate the first year how much money being accumulated to. So this is the future value for the first year. Ten percent compounded quarterly. Periodic interest rate ten percent divided by four. One year we have four quarters. Finish this calculation. Give us a future value, and then we pay the five thousand dollar. So we do the deduction. Give us leftover. That will be the new principal, and then we use the new principal for second time period, three years. And we do have different interest rate, eight percent compounded semi-annually. So zero point zero eight divided by two. This is periodic interest rate. And three years we have six compounding period, six half years. Give us a new balance. This balance at that moment we pay the six thousand dollar. So we have a new outstanding balance after the payment. From here, we continue move on for another two years, and we have a new interest rate, seven point five percent compounded annually. So we don't have to divide anything, and we experience two years. Finish the future value. That would be the future, the last payment, eighteen hundred ninety-five dollar forty-one cents. See you next time.